Hello, my name is Mrs. Pep Rezos, and today I'm going to be reading Chapter 12 in Mysteries According to Humphrey. The title of this chapter is The Case of the New Mr. E. As the light in the room grew darker that evening, the pumpkins on the wall grew brighter. For some reason, those jack-o'-lanterns really bothered me. Aldo liked them, though. When he came in to clean that night, he said, Whoa, I almost thought I was in the wrong room. He stopped and admired all the decorations. They did a real good job. Speaking of Halloween, I have a present for you, Humphrey. I love, love, love presents. He wheeled his cart to the middle of the room. Then he reached into his lunch sack and pulled something out. Maria helped me with this, Aldo explained as he walked toward my cage. He opened the door and put something orange in my cage. A little Halloween treat, he said. In front of me was a tiny little jack-o'-lantern. It was actually a piece of pumpkin with carrots and seeds that made a little face. It looked perfectly hamsterlicious. Thank you, thank you, thank you a million times, I squeaked excitedly. It's my pleasure, Aldo replied. I started to nibble on the pumpkin right away while Aldo gave Og his nightly froggy food sticks. Poor Og, I guess he'll never know how tasty pumpkin is, especially the seeds. When Aldo was ready to leave, he said, I've got a joke for you too. What do ghosts eat on their cereal? I have no idea, I said. Og didn't say a thing not even boing. Boo berries! Then Aldo burst out laughing and kept on chuckling as he rolled his cart out the door. After he'd gone, when I looked up at the row of pumpkins on the wall, they didn't look scary. They just looked yummy. Class, it's time to begin, Mr. E announced the next morning. We have a lot to do today. Can we play math, Gibal? Simon asked. Not right now, Mr. E answered. Word war? Rosie asked. Not today, Mr. E said. We've got a lot of work to do. There were a few groans, but not many. We're going to start with Mrs. Brisbane's mystery words, he said. Take out a sheet of paper. Mr. E still had small round glasses and red hair. But this was a different Mr. E than I'd seen before. This was a real teacher. Besides, I was happy, happy, happy that we were going back to mystery words. I knew what piwak meant and pizzazz. But today, Mr. E gave us a new word to figure out. Persizzle. I wondered if it meant a hot handball, handbag. He wrote this sentence on the board. When you go to the store, please get some persizzle for tomorrow's lunches. Gosh, persizzle had to be some kind of food, but it could be anything. Carrots, apples, celery, or other crunchy things. Then he wrote another sentence. My grandmother spent the afternoon teaching me how to bake persizzle. I don't think a grandmother would spend a whole afternoon teaching somebody how to bake a carrot or an apple. I like them wrong. The third sentence was, my favorite breakfast is persizzle with jam. <gasps> jam, it's a sweet, fruity spread. I know that, and as far as I knew, humans usually ate jam on bread. Persizzle was bread. I got 100% on my assignment. My friends were all shouting out, bread, so they got 100% too. I was most excited because Mr. E was following Mrs. Brisbane's lesson plan, and as far as I could tell, everybody still liked him. Personally, I liked him a little more than I had the day before. I didn't have much time to think about persizzle with jam because Mr. E then went into a math lesson that didn't involve basketballs or running or shouting. My friends worked hard and didn't talk unless they were called on. Just before recess, Mr. E talked about Egypt. He had me on the edge of my seat, er, cage, talking about pyramids, mummies, and the Nile River. I tell you, I was shivering and quivering during that lesson. And when my friends went out to play, Mr. E sat on Mrs. Brisbane's desk and studied lesson plans in her binder. We got so much done that day, I'm not sure Mrs. Brisbane could have kept up. But my classmates and I did. Mr. E even gave out homework assignments. Real homework. No one complained because he explained why it was important. Late in the afternoon, helpful Holly reminded Mr. E that he needed to choose who would take me home for that weekend. Mr. E asked my friends to raise their hands if they hadn't taken me home yet and thought their parents would give permission. A lot of hands went up. How was Mr. E going to choose? He looked at the clock. I think we have time for a quick spelling bee to decide. He asked Rosie, Joey, Tall, Paul, Thomas, and Sophie to spell different words. They all got through the first round. On the second round, Rosie missed the word symbol. 
I was surprised there was an, a Y in it too. On the third round, Tall Paul missed the word misery. I completely understood because the S does sound like a Z. Sophie went down on the word mystify. I would have too. It was down to Joey and Thomas, and for the next two rounds, neither of them missed a word. They were difficult words too. Disease, fierce, schedule. The spelling bee was suddenly very exciting, and it was almost time for the bell to ring. I'll tell you what, Mr. E said. You've done such a great job. Would you agree to share, Humphrey? The boys both looked puzzled. I was a little concerned, too. I hoped they weren't planning to split me in half. Thomas could have him Friday night, then Joey could pick him up at Thomas's house on Saturday and have Humphrey Saturday night, Mr. E explained. Would your families agree to that? Neither boy looked happy, but they both nodded. Bring back notes from your parents tomorrow, Mr. E told them, just as the bell rang. How did it go? Miss Mack asked after school. Not bad, Mr. E smiled. We got a lot done and nobody threw anything at me. Thanks for taking me along last night. I think I'm on the right track now. Great, Ms. Mack said, and the Halloween surprise is going to be something. We just need to make sure no one finds out our secret. Finds out what? I squeaked. Boing, boing, ugh, twinged. Ms. Mack must have heard us because she laughed. No one must find out, even Humphrey and Og, she said. When Mr. E and Ms. Mack left for the day, I was annoyed. It's not nice to keep secrets, I told Og, and it's especially not nice to keep secrets from classroom pets. Boing, 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 Og agreed. But I had something else on my mind. Besides the Halloween surprise, I could tell that Joey didn't want to be around Thomas. I wasn't sure why, but I think it had to do with the way Thomas exaggerated. They should have been friends, but they weren't, and I was pie-hawked about how to help them. Pie-hacked, sorry, about how to help them. I had another problem to think about, my costume. I'd felt so proud to win the prize for best costume last Halloween, and I, ho and I hoped I'd win it again. Friday was a busy day, and a day that made me happy, happy, happy. We learned more about Egypt and a new kind of math problem, and we got a new vocabulary list. The day went by in a hurry because we were so busy. At the very end of the day, Mr. E made a special announcement. If the class all did well on our math test on Monday, he'd finish reading The Red-Headed Leak. Everybody cheered at that news. No one cheered louder than me. I was really looking forward to meeting Thomas's dad. After all, according to his son, Mr. True was a juggler, airplane, pilot, ship's captain, detective. When he came to pick us up from school, he just looked like a regular nice dad. Do you mind cheering Humphrey this weekend? He asked as he drove us home from school. Not really, Thomas said. Maybe when Joey comes over tomorrow, we can shoot some hoops. Sure, Mr. True said. I'll take you to the park. I wasn't sure if Joey would like that, but I crossed my paws and hoped hoped that he'd say yes. When we got to the house, I was suddenly a little nervous. So far this school year, Thomas had told a lot of stories about his shark teeth collection, the gigantic fish he'd caught, and huge spiders and colossal snakes, and all those tall tales about his dad. Luckily, I didn't see any spiders, snakes, or fish, or with or without teeth at his house. Thomas's dad helped get me set up. His little sister, Teresa, came in to watch me. I spun on my wheel for her, which made her laugh. Then Thomas's mom brought me a celery treat. Later that night, they all watched me roll around in my hamster ball. While I rolled, I wished I could help the boys become friends. All that rolling helped me think, and before long, I had a plan that would force them to spend time together, at least for a little while. I crossed my paws and hoped it would work. If they got to know each other better, maybe Joey would find out what I knew. Thomas was a nice, normal boy and Thomas would find out that if he wanted friends, he needed to stop exaggerating and tell the truth. Otherwise, how would anyone trust what he said? Humphrey's Dictionary. If you don't have a viol violin like Sherlock Holmes, rolling in a hamster ball can also help you think. And that concludes chapter 12. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.